to you because someone asked a question, Natalie asked the question, can someone explain the law that the township came up with to get the permit withdrawn? Maybe we could bolt that on to another question we had, which is how did the community find out about and decide to adopt a home rule charter? And what was the press process of like for them, and maybe I would ask another. I would add, add on to that the role of rights of nature's in the, in their fight. Was that something as at the original outset of this fight, or did it come in later? Yeah, thanks, Ted, and also thanks to the filmmakers and to Matt and Pop the Harm and Frack Tracker for everybody's involvement in all this. Um, I, I think it's been a really beautiful, um, yeah, just showing of uh, the resistance and resilience of the folks in Grant Township. So just to put those things out there. Um, also, I just want to start by saying, as of today, there is no injection well in Grant Township. So for those of you who are willing to turn your cameras on and uh, maybe give a quick round of applause, um, please do. Um, I don't think Stacey or Judy are on this call, but um, yeah, uh, just a big show of support for all the work that they put in over the years. Um, it's huge. So, um, and it's been a, a yeah effort that has been supported by many people. So thanks to um, obviously Judy and Stacy and everybody for supporting them. Um, I think, yeah, to get to the, the legal stuff, it's a little uh, complicated, but I'll do my best and try to keep it as um, simple as I can. Uh, I first got a call from Judy in 2014. Um, and it was not a, a fun call. She wanted me to do something um, uh, through the Legal Defense Fund that uh, we didn't do, which was essentially try to appeal permits that had been issued for these, these activities. So the injection well cannot take place without a permit from the Environmental Protection Agency at the federal level or without a permit from the Department of Environmental Protection at the state level. And she was asking us basically to provide assistance with appealing these permits. Our organization's history over the years has found that communities, when they try to appeal permits, usually end up losing. They don't get what they want. They get the project. At best, they're left arguing over the where and the why and the how it's going to proceed. It's not about actually stopping it. It's about negotiating how much harm is going to um, be placed within the community. And so Judy, um, as you probably got a sense of her through the film, uh, wasn't happy with my explanation and uh, had a, had a few few things to say to me. Um, and I said, look, I'm sorry, you know, we will help you with this other avenue if you want, which is essentially to create a local law that says, no, we don't want it. We're not going to stand for it. We don't want it in any form um, because this is harmful to our community and to the ecosystems. And we're not going to screw around with the where it's going to be placed, how much uh, frack waste per day is going to be put down the well, any of that stuff. And uh, she thought about it and got back with me um, a couple of weeks later. And then I was on a, a, you know, drove up to Grant Township and presented a, a township meeting. And so I'm going to try to speed things up as much as I can. The first law that we wrote with the community was an ordinance. At that time, they were what's called a second class township in Pennsylvania. Um, and they passed it in June of 2014. And it said no injection wells. And it wasn't just a no. It wasn't just a ban. It also said we, the people of the community, have certain rights. Uh, we have the right to clean air, to clean water and a healthy environment. The ecosystems here have rights as well, rights of nature, which Ted mentioned, um, and we have a right to local self-government. We have the right to be the ones that determine our future here, not some out-of-area corporation. We're the ones that get to be in charge of what we do, uh, where we live, and we don't want our uh, water supplies threatened. So, so we worked with them to draft that, um, and it got passed in June of 2014. They were sued um, two months later in August of 2014, originally uh, in federal court by PGE, Pennsylvania General Energy. That's a corporation that is still intending to dump frack waste within the community. Um, that first case went about as we expected, which is that uh, they lost in federal court. Um, the judge in that case, uh, her name is Susan Paradise Baxter, um, up until a couple of months before she took the case, she had a stock holdings in a subsidiary of Halliburton Corporation. So I think it you know, probably gives folks a, an indication of uh, where her interests lie. So you had a judge that had interest in oil and gas. You had um, 
the state law, which basically said you have to accept this, and the federal uh, EPA, which uh, allowed the, the permit to be placed in the first place. And then you had all these things that were crashing down in this community, so they lost in 2015. Um, but they went further and they adopted what Ted mentioned was a home rule charter, which is a, a um, something that's offered to all municipalities in Pennsylvania. Uh, was put into place in the late 60s, uh, which allows communities to essentially create their own local charter. It's a local constitution. Um, right now, if you're not home rule, it's essentially the government you get that was written by legislators 100 years ago. Under a charter, you get to actually adopt the government that you want. You get to elect people to come together to hold community meetings, decide what you want in your government, what you don't want in your government, and then you get to have a popular vote on what your government actually looks like. So it's true democracy in its barest form. Um, and that's what they did. And so they adopted this law in 2015. It was only a month after the judge stripped out the provisions in their first law and said, no, you don't get to do this. That's what the judge said. And the community said, hey, sorry, um, the big, big middle finger and said, you know, actually, we're going to reinstate a new law and adopt a new form of government that reinstates the ban. And we're going to say no to the injection well again. So let's go. Um, I'm going to wrap this up very quickly, as, as quickly as I can. Two years later, the State Department of Environmental Protection sued Grant Township over their new local law, which banned injection wells. So the state DEP, the Department of Environmental Protection, sued Grant Township for trying to protect its environment. It's the, the barest bones, um, you know, way I can help people understand how our government works, which is you have the state DEP and the federal judge all crashing down on this community, trying to get them to submit and to forcibly put frack waste, to toxic frack waste into this community. And yet the community still didn't submit. They said, fine, we're going to court again. And we've been representing them in that case uh, since that time as well, which is now before the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. In addition, though, and then what I want to make very, 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 very clear is that this isn't just a legal strategy. This is an organizing strategy, which is that Judy and Stacy, the hell vendors, the township supervisors have all been relentless in not just waiting for these lawsuits to come to them. They've been pushing forward and saying, we don't really, frankly, care what the law says if it's telling us we have to have toxic waste dumped into our water supply. We don't accept that as legitimate, and we will continue to push forward. That also include a first in the nation law, um, which they passed in 2016, which legalized nonviolent direct action. It said, we are going to allow people to come into our community to actually physically obstruct the dumping of waste, and we will uh, protect them because we think this is that important. It's about protecting our rights. It's about protecting the rights of nature. It's about protecting the community members that live here. It's about protecting the water. And so, you know, just to say this isn't just about like doing laws and hoping that you're going to get the best of the courts because history has shown us that the courts, you know, historically in this uh, country have not been the ones that protect our environment or the communities. It's only until there's physical resistance that says we're not doing it here. And so I just want to say that, you know, it is a legal strategy. I'm happy to go into it more with folks want. But um, it's also been about a concerted organizing strategy of pushing forward on the media front and also saying, look, you know, it's just not going to happen here. Um, and we're going to do everything we can within our power to make sure that it doesn't.